If you have a list of tasks for any project or a long to-do list, it's good to know the percentage of completion of your task in a visual way. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to create a progressive data bar by using form controls, functions, and conditional formatting. Here is my finished project. This is a construction project consisting of multiple tasks. The functionality applies for any size of project and any number of tasks. For each task, I have a checkbox. When I finish the task, I just click on the checkbox to mark that it's completed. Automatically, there is a data bar that appears in row number four, showing that the percentage of completion is 12.5%. What if I check another task? Now we are at 25% completion. If I click on the other task, the percentage changes and the data bar is progressive. When I complete all the tasks and I check them all, now the percentage of completion shows 100% and I see the full length of the data bar. I can also reset the checkboxes by clicking on this button, uncheck all, and when I do that, all the checkboxes are clear. I also have another command button. When I click on it, I can select all the checkboxes with one single click. Now let's build this project from ground up in Excel. Here is my start file, which shows a list of tasks for building a website project. I start by creating some checkboxes for each one of the tasks. And to do that, I need to use the developer tab. If you don't have the developer tab, then you can right click on any tab, click on customize the ribbon, and in the Excel options dialog box, just check the box for developer. I'm going to hit cancel because I already have the developer tab. When I click on developer, there is a group for controls. I click on the down arrow for insert, and I want to use a checkbox form control, the third option in the top row. When I click on checkbox, the mouse pointer changes to a crosshair, and in cell B6, I'm going to position my first checkbox. The checkbox comes with some text. I want to get rid of the text and resize my checkbox. I right click on the checkbox, I select edit text, and then I delete the text that I can see. And when I click outside, I just see the checkbox. I can move it and reposition it. To do that, I need to select it by pressing Control, and then I can move it up. I can move it a little bit to the right. After centering my checkbox, I want to copy this checkbox instead of recreating it over and over again. I hover over the lower right corner, the autofill handle, and I click and drag all the way down. I want to copy the checkbox, but I don't want the horizontal line. Then I click on the options tag and say I want to fill without formatting. Now my next step will be linking each checkbox to the cell behind it. I start with the first checkbox. I press Ctrl and click. And then on the Developer tab, I click on Properties. In the Properties dialog box, I put the blinking cursor in the cell link. And then I click on the cell B6, which is the cell upon which the checkbox is sitting. I hit OK and I go to the next one. For the second checkbox, I press Control, click on Properties, and this one should be linked to cell B7. I put the blinking cursor in the cell link, and then I click on cell B7, and then I hit OK. I have to do that for each and every checkbox. I finished linking the checkboxes to the cells underneath, and now I want to test. When I check a box, it will return it true, like this. When I check the next box, it returns a true. When I uncheck it, it returns a false. In computer language, a true equals one, a false equals zero. I don't want to see the trues and falses, then I'm going to select the entire range. And I want to change the font color and I'll make it white. Now I cannot see the trues and false. I previously selected cell B4 and C4 and I clicked on Merge and Center. I rarely use this command, but for the functionality I'm going to create, the Center Across Selection, which is a better option, will not work. Then I Merge and Center, and then in cell B4, I start to create an Average function, equal Average, and then I hit Tab. I want the average of the entire range in column B, where I have the checkboxes, but I want to divide it by one. 
I close the bracket and then I hit enter and I get 12.5% because I have a single checkbox checked. If I check another one, then I see the percentage increasing and so on. I'm going to create in the same cell B4 and C4. I'm going to create a data bar conditional formatting. And to do that, I go to the Home tab, click on the down arrow for conditional formatting, hover over data bar, and I want to create a blue data bar conditional formatting. I select it. And then I want to manage the conditional formatting. So I click on conditional formatting. I go to manage rule. I select the rule that I just created the data bar and I click on edit rule. In the edit formatting rule dialog box, I'm going to change the type to become a number for the minimum and maximum. And for the minimum, I want a value of zero. And for the maximum, I want a value of one. You can change the gradient of blue color if you like. I did that, and then I hit OK, and another OK. Now let's test. Look at the data bar conditional formatting. If I check another test, then the percentage of completion is at 50%. I can check another one and so on. If I uncheck another box, then the percentage of completion decreases, and accordingly, the progressive data bar becomes shorter. To increase the usefulness of this project, I have two pictures for two buttons, one for the reset and one for select all. I'm going to create two very simple macros and attach them to each one of these two buttons. To do that, I switch to the Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11. I want to create a new module, Alt IM. And in the new module, I start creating my first sub procedure for resetting all the checkboxes. Then I type sub. Reset, open and close bracket, and then I hit enter. Between the sub and end sub, I'm going to write my code. And this code is looping over each one of the checkboxes for each CB, which stands for checkbox. In sheet one, checkboxes, I want to change the CB dot value to become Excel off. And then the next checkbox and so on. To create the select all, I'm going to copy this sub procedure and make some changes. Control C to copy, and then I hit enter, Control V. I change the name of the sub procedure and I make it select all. And for this one, instead of CB.value equals Excel off, I change the off to on, and I'm done. I can close the Visual Basic Editor, and now I'm back to Excel. I want to attach the two sub procedures to these two pictures. I select the first picture, I right click, and from the right click menu, I select assign macro. This one is for resetting, then I select the reset macro, I hit OK. I select the second picture, I right click, assign macro, and I select the select all, I hit OK, and now I deselect and I can test. To reset the checkboxes, I click on the reset button and all the checkboxes are clear and the progressive data bar disappeared and I see the percentage at 0%. To check them all, I click on select all and I see the full length of the progressive data bar and the percentage is 100%. So we were able to create a progressive data bar for any project by combining the functionality of checkboxes conditional formatting, and a simple average function. We also took our project to the next step by creating a simple VBA code to reset or select all. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.